Turn your eyes, O God, our shield, and look on the face of your anointed one. One day within your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. <clears throat> I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that, loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you. 
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. A young man approached Jesus and said, Teacher, what good must I do to gain eternal life? He answered him, Why do you ask me about the good? There is only one who is good. If you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. He asked him, Which ones? And Jesus replied, You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All of these I have observed. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you wish to be perfect, go. Sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the young man heard this statement, he went away sad, for he had many possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. Teacher, what good must I do to gain eternal life? Here is a young man, a faithful man, of the Jewish people, whom Scripture says that our Lord loved. He was clearly striving to live a life of holiness. But our Lord challenged him. He challenged him to live a life not only of greater faith, trusting in God and God's providence to provide for him, but also to live a life of greater charity. Our Lord says, keep the commandments if you want to enter into eternal life. You and I know those commandments can be summarized by love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. And if we want to understand what that means to unpack the first commandment, we look at the first tablet of the law the first three commandments. And if we want to understand what loving one's neighbor looks like, we look at the second tablet that has the remaining seven commandments on it. But then our Lord tells him to do something further. He tells him to be detached from material things, to be detached from worldly desires, to be detached from this notion that you can provide for yourself completely. And he challenges him to embrace a life of apostleship, to take on the evangelical life of poverty, chastity, and obedience. Here is his opportunity, his ticket to be a disciple and maybe even an apostle of Christ. But love of this world prevents him from doing so. This is why the man goes away sad, because he is afraid of losing something. There's a conflict. He obviously sees what our Lord is doing and wants to be a part of it, but he's dragged down by the weight of his possessions, and by his love of material goods. I would say in today's world that we live in, if this gospel was to be spoken to somebody, I think in many ways we would have to reverse it. I think people are far more willing today to give of their possessions, to be generous, to try to support those who are in need in some way, form, or manner. But we can't get them to keep the commandments. Why? Because rather than fearing being governed by God, or rather than desiring to be governed by God, they fear that if they give themselves over to the laws of God, that somehow they will lose something of themselves, that somehow their lives will no longer be fulfilled. So either way, uh, whether we take it in light of how our Lord presents it uh, in today's gospel narrative, or how most people are living this out today, there's some sort of unhealthy attachment. So going forward today, What our Lord is asking you and I to do is fairly simple. He wants us to place all of our trust in Him. He wants us to realize 
all that we need in order to get to heaven, in order to become, to, to become saints, He will provide for us, including the good works that we need to do to get to heaven. Sacred Scripture says God has preordained all the good works He desires for us to do for our salvation. So let us simply trust in the Lord and realize all that we have, including ourselves, including our intellects and our will, are given to us to serve God, to love God, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. May God bless us this day, that we may never walk away from him sad. Amen. Trusting in God, we make our petitions known to Him. For the Church, may God strengthen her in her mission of spreading the good news. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For national leaders, may the Holy Spirit guide them in seeking to promote peace on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, our prayers and bring them to fulfillment in accord with your holy will. We ask this in the name of your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by his sending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. With the Lord there is mercy, in Him is plentiful redemption. Amen. The 
body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. All right. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of
Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed in his image on earth, we may merit to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Over the weekend, President Donald Trump's brother died, uh, and so being a part of the Christian family, we would ask, I'd ask everyone to join me in praying an extra Hail Mary for the repose of his soul. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, immaculate heart of Mary, St. John the Evangelist. Amen.